morning. Come on, can we give the worship team a big hand this morning? You could be seated uh, right there where you're at. And uh, man, it's just coming up here. It just started to really hit me like the, the, the magnitude of, man, I'm speaking in Victory Outreach Fremont's church building for the first time, you know. And so I know that, that many of you over the years, this has been a, a dream. It's been a vision. It's been more than a dream. It's been a vision, right? It's been a vision, and uh, we've been patient. We've been waiting, and here we are in the church building, and we know that uh, you are there at home ready to, to come, and uh, I just want to take a moment and just uh, just share my gratitude, right, for God, how he's been faithful uh, to this church, how he's been faithful to me uh, through these seasons, uh, continued to, to grow me, right, continued to, to stretch me, continued to challenge me in every season, right? I want to thank uh, our pastors for, for doing the same, man, just allowing God to move them uh, uh, in different ways to continue to challenge the church, to continue, uh, like I said, to grow the church, and continue to take steps of faith. Uh, anybody who's watching here this morning, everybody who's in the room, of course, and then anybody who's there at home who, who've contributed uh, to this ministry and been faithful to this ministry, just want to say thank you uh, to you uh, that, that you just continue to, to press in, continue to be faithful, continue to pray, uh, continue to stay, and continue to move forward in your own personal walk with Christ. And uh, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. And uh, I'll be sharing a few things here uh, in this message about what we have to look forward to. I'm going to be reading a few scriptures to start. And uh, you could turn to Luke chapter 5, verse 4. And, uh, man, I, I just kind of looking around the room, we're starting to grow in the church. We're starting to grow, we're starting to think about the, the seasons that, that we've been in over the last couple of years. I'm sure you've heard about it, you know, from the living room having maybe 12 people to 14 people in the living room and then going to our studio and having to keep the, the capacity real limited. And uh, it's been kind of a discouraging thing, right? For me personally, just as a member of the church, it's been a little frustrating uh, to be having to, to be in church and to not be able to see the church, right? I thank God for our Sunday nights. I thank God for them. And uh, th that's really our opportunity. But for me personally, it's just not enough. Uh, right here in, in the church, like I said, we're continuing to grow. We've got about 75 chairs now in the sanctuary. And uh, that's kind of our limit at the time. And we're 75 chairs and 75 people. Uh, but uh, just an update about the building is uh, we're constantly in here. We're constantly in the building. Um, we're constantly looking at, okay, what can come down now? What can we do now? What can we what can we do to start to get ahead? And uh, we're just in in a in a place right now where we know what's got to be done, right? We got the blueprints, we got the vision, we know exactly what's got to be done. But we're in a season of just being a little bit patient. We're in a season of being patient. But the way that I like to to look at things is, man, every Sunday, every service, every week, every month is one week closer to the promise. It's one more Sunday closer to the promise. And so don't get discouraged. They're at home because it's coming. It's coming. If there's one thing that I've learned, man, it's, uh, it's to be patient, right? It's to be patient. It's to be patient, to wait on God, wait on his timing. And when he opens the door, where are you at? You're ready to come through it, right? So basically be patient and just don't mess it up. But uh, there's going to be so much to do here at the church. There's going to be so much to do, uh, not only in the, in the construction seasons, Right, I'm just looking around, and every time I'm in the building, I'm like, okay, we got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. And uh, there's going to be a lot to do, and we can't do it ourselves, so we're going to need your help. We're going to need your help, those of you who are there at home. And I know I'm getting texts, I'm getting calls, what can I do, how can I help? And it's tough to be like, just hang in there right now, and we're going we're gonna to contact you, we're going to get a hold of you. But when it's time to go, if you know our pastors, as soon as we get that green light, he's going to want to be in the next day. So you guys really going to um, need you to stay faithful, stay ready. And so when these things do come up and when we do open the doors of the church and we do get things moving and we do get things activated, uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunities for you to serve uh, in this ministry uh, from, from all the way out in the street, right, to all the way through the house and then even keeping your faithful seat in the church, right? And so 
every, every single person who's at home, I know and I hope you're listening, uh, we're just, we're, we're ready, we're faithful, and we're just being patient in this season, so stay ready. Um, here's a, a, a few scriptures that I'm going to read, and just through that worship, it's like, it's like, man, I just feel like an openness in the room, an openness in the room just to speak freely, and uh, I know this morning I, ha- I have a lot of scripture that I want to read to you in the beginning, uh, but I don't want to change that. I want to read uh, these three passages of scripture, and I want to give God's uh, word the authority, right, that it deserves. So I want you to stay with me as I read these. It's going to be a little long. It's going to be a little unconventional, right, because we don't hear it like that all the time. But I want you to just listen. I want you to pay attention. We're going to hear three passages, passages of scripture, and I want you to pay attention to the response of the three individuals that had an interaction with Jesus. You guys ready this morning? Amen. All right, Luke chapter 5, verse 4 through 11. This is the calling of the first disciples. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of, sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Luke 18, verse 18 through 23, the rich young ruler. A certain ruler asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And and then the, the, the man responded and said, All these I have kept since I was a boy. And when Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy, right? And the man left. Last scripture, Luke 23, verse 39 through 43, the thief on the cross. Verse 39, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Father, we thank you for the, the reading of your word. We just pray, Lord, that you move, help us understand. Keep us open, Lord, and we want to hear you speak this morning. And we give you honor and glory. Amen. And so we see here in three passages of Scripture, three men and their response uh, to an interaction with Jesus. And I've titled this morning's message, Faith, Will He Find It? Right? Each of these men had this one thing in common, that it started with faith. If we look at the calling of Peter, right, he's the first example we have this morning, and and we think and we say, why did Jesus choose Peter? Right? Why did he choose Peter? Was it because he was a strong man? Right? Was it because uh, he was a charismatic man? Was it because he was loyal? Right? Was it because of any of those things? No, it wasn't because of the character of his strength. It was because of the strength of his faith. Right deep down, and you could tell from his response, that Peter knew that he was weak. 
Peter knew that he was imperfect, right? In verse 8, it says that he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man, right? He was convinced that his security and strength, it came from a power greater than his own. Peter was a simple man, if you will, right? He was just an everyday fisherman doing his thing. There was nothing flashy about him. There was nothing great about him. Jesus, uh, when he came, it says, the Bible says that he came and he saw him working, right? He had been up all night. Uh, they had been uh, uh, working all night. They, their labor, he was just uh, uh, tired. He was tired. Man, we worked all night. I gave it everything I got and I still got nothing, right? And uh, Jesus came to find him in the perfect timing uh, there on the shore. Uh, when he interacted with Peter, got into his boat, right, came into his life, he gave him a simple instruction to let his nets down again. He gave him a simple instruction to let his nets down again, and Peter had the faith enough to say, I'm tired, right, I got nothing left, we just cleaned up, we just got done, but because you say so, I will do it, right? He was able to recognize the authority of Jesus that morning, and we see that this calling of the first disciples, what Jesus was doing here, this was one of the first things that he did after he came out of the wilderness. He, he got baptized. Uh, he started his journey. And one of the first things he did before uh, people started coming to him, before uh, they started to go uh, on, this, on this journey or on, on, his, on, his, on his ministry, right, on his walk, on his journey to the cross, uh, before any of that happened, before the miracles of healing, uh, before any of that, what he had to do was Jesus had to build a body of faith around him, right? Peter was highlighted here. Peter showed faith, right? Peter was called out because of his faith. But the Bible also says that he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. There was a few other disciples that were there with him. It says that James and John were also there with him. And faith was birthed in those men, and they were able to be a body of faith around Jesus for his missionary uh, trip, right? Victory Outreach Fremont has uh, created, has developed into a body of faith. This is a body of faith, right? Of faithful people, right? Uh, there's a difference between loyalty. We say like Victory Outreach Fremont, we're loyal, right? We're loyal. But I want you to understand that, that loyalty Loyalty in the world, it has an expiration date. Loyalty has an expiration date. When we were in the world, we were loyal, right, but only for so long, right? Some of us longer than others. But you could see when things didn't go right or things didn't work out the way that somebody uh, wanted them to work out for them, that they were gone. Victory Outreach Fremont is not a loyal people. Victory Outreach Fremont is a faithful people. Right, I got a call yesterday, and uh, it was uh, Chris Norrie. He called me, and he's calling me, and he's, and, and he's talking about his uh, suits. Uh, they got registered at Men's Warehouse for their suit. Him and, uh, him and Evie will be getting married uh, in the month of June. And so we're, he's talking to me about it, talking about the suits, talking about how excited he is and looking forward to it. And every time I have a conversation with him, I start to remember. I start to remember uh, the, the journey that he's been on, I've watched him come out of jail, right, looking like he looked like a little kid, right, when he came out of jail, came into the church, and uh, he just, he allowed God to move in his life. He allowed God to move in his life, and uh, he, he continued to, to be faithful, and we were able to see that happen. But before that, before he came in, his mom, his mom, who's with us here this morning, I remember I was directing the home, and she stopped me uh, walking through the, the front doors of the church. And it's, she stopped me, and it was almost like, uh, like somebody was like speaking to the Lord himself, just the, the desperation. You start to think about the stories in the Bible of just like how desperate the women came, right? How desperate the women came, how agonizing the women came, like, Lord, like, please help me. How, even, even the men, too. My son, my son, he's sick. My daughter's sick. And uh, I, like, I felt that for one of the first times. I was like, whoa, it, like, hit me in the stomach, like, super hard. And, it, like, for a moment, it was like, what am I supposed to do? 
You know what I mean? Like, how am I, how, how, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to help? And uh, the Lord just spoke to me, and he's like, do whatever you can. Do whatever you can for this woman. And uh, so it, I started getting on the phone, talking to the attorney, right, uh, starting to set different things up. And somehow uh, we got him released uh, to, the, to the men's home. Got him released to the men's home. We were there, picked him up. We had, to go to, we had to go to Santa Rita like three times to go pick him up. Went one time, they wouldn't let him out. Went another time, they wouldn't let him out. Went three times in a day. We had Pastor Mike with us. And uh, finally, we got him on a Friday night service, right? And uh, to, for him to come in and just to see uh, what God has done in his life <clears throat> over the years, man, completing, the, completing the home, see his mom get married and Edwin and uh, see the family, right? Great things take place. He went to the training center, come home, leading in the gang, working with young people, and now about to get married. And uh, I was praying, really, God, we've heard some great messages here uh, in, in the church uh, lately. And it's like, man, like, God, what's something unique? What's something unique that, that I can bring to the table? Like, what do you want me to speak to the people this morning? Something unique is that uh, when I came into the church, and started to serve in the church, one of the ministries that I had was I, was, uh, I would do the sound. And so there in the senior center, uh, about six years ago, I would, I would go and I'd be in the back of the sanctuary, real quiet, and uh, I would be doing the sound. And, the, and like from that perspective and from that place, uh, what I was doing, I was just observing. I was observing. I'm in a different city, right? I'm not in my hometown. Um, I'm not in my hometown, I'm in a whole, whole new place, but I was just observing these new people, new people I never met before, and just watching and, and believing. And uh, I'm like looking out in the room for who I'm going to pick on right now, but it's like, uh, the <laughs> I remember being in the men's home in, in the Cernas. I remember Andy coming in, and we'd be in the home, and he would, he would just, he would encourage us, right? He would tell us about God's faithful, and he would, uh, just being in a dark place, and and I remember him coming in, and he would say, pray for my son. Pray for my son. He was single at the time, right? He was single, and uh, I remember him saying, pray for my son, Andy. Pray for my son, Andy. And so we prayed for him. We prayed for him, and years later, uh, Andy came into the church. Andy came in. He came into the men's home. And I don't know if he understands the reason why I wanted to hang out with him so much, right? I wanted to hang out with him so much. I wanted to be around him. I wanted to watch because... For me, I was watching God move in somebody's life. I was observing the prayers come to pass. I was, I was observing the desperation of a father praying for his son come to pass. And it was just, it was an incredible thing. We watched Andy go up there. He would go, go on stage, uh, speak on stage there at the uh, senior center. And then one day he, he got married. Sister Martha, she's in the house, you know. And that story is an incredible story, right? And so... I'm, the reason why I'm sharing this with you here this morning is, is in the last five years, right, not including the time uh, during this pandemic, but in a short amount of time in the church building, what was happening was that there was a people that we come in broken. I remember the Quintanillas coming in. I remember so, some of the kids that they have weren't even born at the time yet, right? They had babies in strollers and uh Excuse me, just I remember him crying, man. I remember him crying. I remember his wife crying. I remember him bawling. I remember him coming in broken, right? But to be able to see in this short amount of time, the man of faith, the man of faith, the man of God, they stuck in. They pursued, right? He's up here. He's playing. They got his son at worship practice. They got his son at gang night playing the guitar. He's here somewhere. There he is. Rasta, right? The oldest son. And uh, just like looking I look at the Sanchez family, right, the, the, my director's in the home, watch her pray for her grandchildren, I watch her daughter, or her granddaughters, I watch Lila and Tim's daughters go to the training center, they've been to Panama, right, they've been to South Africa, right, I'm looking at the Rivera family, Mercedes was in South Africa, right, uh, and then Selena in Los Angeles, right, I'm looking, I see Alonzo sitting there, right, he came into the church, Louis Crossway coming in to direct the home, Alonzo going to the third wave campus. Did you have your daughter when you came into the church? No. He's got his daughter full time. He's got his daughter full time. God's been faithful. God's been faithful. But because he stuck it out, because he trusted God, he didn't take things into his own hands. And he continued to trust God, 
right? I remember being in the home, speaking of custody, I remember being in the home and Robert being my director. And we would take him and we'd take him. I asked him, how old was your daughter, do you think, in 2016? He says six or seven. And uh, just a little girl, man, just a little girl. No custody at all. All he could do was go visit. And uh, he would tell me the, the, the types of things that were happening in the household. And he would cry, man. He would cry and he would pray. And we'd be on the way and we'd just be praying for his daughter, praying for his daughter, praying for his daughter. Like, I couldn't imagine how hard that would have to be to go to pick up your daughter, to spend a little bit of time with her. And then you have to drop her back off into a house of darkness, right? A bad place. But no, he didn't leave the home. He didn't leave his calling. He didn't leave the place. He continued to pursue. He continued to stay in the house of God. He continued to have faith, even when things didn't look right. And he's got full-time custody of his daughter now with his wife uh, there in Newark, right? Just incredible things. Pastor Keith, I never knew this, but he said that he used to sleep in front of the, the church doors. He used to sleep in front of the church doors, homeless. He's a pastor. He's a teacher now. I'm talking short amount of time. I'm talking about a short amount of time. Alana, she was in the gang, right, coming through the gang, uh, stepped out in faith, went to college, doing little Bible studies at her college, right, uh, uh, doing her thing far away from home, all the way across the country. Uh, but she found herself a Victory Outreach Church. She got plugged in, right, graduated with her BSN, her bachelor's in nursing at the age of 21. Just incredible things that have happened in this house. And many of you have been here longer than me. And so you've seen all that happen. You've seen the great things that have taken place in my, in my life. The, the amazing things that happen. I'm talking about in the home. I was having a, 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 a hard time uh, when, it, when I think about the home. And it's like, it's like man, uh, it's tough because you see them. You want it. And I wonder, like, like how they look at me or how they see me or how they see a uh, man and woman into the church. But... You, what you guys and, and girls need to understand is that every single one of us came in broken. Most of us with nothing. Most of us addicted. Most of us just, just dead. I came into this church dead. I said Chris looked like a little kid. I looked even littler, right? I, had a, I was probably 130 pounds when I came into this church, just dead. I sat in my seat, didn't know how to smile. I didn't know how to talk, right? I couldn't keep a conversation. Right? And now, boom, licensed minister in the church, working, journeyman in my trade, running a discipleship home. I'm telling you, and in a short, short amount of time, right? I share these things with you because in the last five years, just the incredible things, the incredible uh, things that what happens when people step into a house of faith, right? Here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the main point of that. Here's the main message of that is that there's a body of faith that when somebody steps into it, when somebody walks into it, that there's a whole body of faith that receives you and lets you know that if God could do it for me, he can surely do it for you. All different backgrounds, all different lifestyles, all different ages, men, women, young, old, it don't matter, right? It don't matter. You come into this church and God is faithful. God is faithful to do what he's promised he's going to do, right? Uh, having a lot of conversations with, with people these days, and I'm around a lot of people at work and, and different things like that, and God's been exposing me uh, outside of the church to different people, different perspectives in the way uh, that people think, and really it's uh, uh, some people believe that the things that happen in life are just fate, right? They're fate, they're going to happen, right? Don't really have a choice. Like, it's all laid out. It's going to happen. Some are like, no, no way. It's not faith. No God. Um, it's not faith. Uh, it's just by chance, right? Things happen. They happen by chance. Uh, good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. And I, I don't want to hear anything about it. I just want to live my life, right? Well, when we look and we see according to scripture and we see according to the truth, it's not fate. It's not even chance, right? But it's faith that determines the lives that we live. You understand that? I'm telling you it's faith that determines the lives that we live, right? We see it there in the life of Peter, right? You see it in the life of Peter that he was willing to have faith. He was willing to follow Jesus. He was willing to trust him. And in that lifestyle, 
because he was willing to follow him, because he was willing to have faith, because he was willing to believe that Jesus was who the Bible says he was, he was able to see uh, uh, beyond what he could ever even imagine. He was able to see the miracles. He was right there. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that, being right there, walking with Jesus, hearing teaching straight from the mouth, hearing healings right, uh, uh, right there. And uh, we see him being able to live that life Right? But in contrast to Peter's life, we see here that it, the rich young ruler, right? The rich young ruler represents the attitude of most people that we bump into, right? He had everything. He just wanted to live a simple life. I follow all the rules, right? I'm a good person. Like, he had it all going on. He probably dressed nice. He probably talked well, right? Um, like he said, I, I, follow all the, I follow all the rules, but what can I do to have eternal life, Right? And uh, Jesus' response to him was that it, it takes faith. It takes faith to have a life eternal. It takes faith, right, to live a life of purpose. And the, the, the rich young ruler, he represents the way that a lot of people think. What, what about this? Uh, we hear a lot of people say um, that, like, I could just kind of live whatever life that I want, right, and then I can repent at the end and go to heaven, right? Doesn't the Bible say that? What about the, they know the scripture too. What about the thief on the cross where in his last moment, uh, he was able to believe in Jesus and go to heaven? And that's a pretty common thing. People have said that to me before. Why don't I just, I can just live the whatever way that I want and then he'll forgive me, right? He's a forgiving God. They kind of like throw that, uh, throw that out there freely. And um, I, I can't say that I know exactly uh, how, how that works, but I, I thank God that he gives us an opportunity um, at the end to accept him. I do. I thank God that he gives uh, uh, men and, and women the opportunity uh, to repent even at the last, last moment. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's faithful and he's gracious. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith, right? So in, the, um, in that rich young ruler's life, he was able to say, you know, I do everything good, I do everything right, and in that time too, if he had great things, it was a sign that God was like, God was with you, God was favorable, so like people looked at him, and they saw like, oh man, God must be with that man, he's dressed nice, he walks right, he walks tight, it, like God must be with that man, but it, it, it wasn't so, it wasn't so, um, and so we see that it's not, um, we see it with the, with the man on the cross that get, going to heaven is not it's not about all the good that you've done in your life versus all the bad that you've done in your life, right? A lot of people think that it's, uh, it's by works uh, that we get into heaven, uh, but it's not, right? It's not. And uh, we see here, if, if that were so, then it wouldn't work for the man on the cross, right? He was being uh, crucified as a thief, right? He had done some people wrong, and now uh, he was getting punished for it. Uh, but even though he lived his life that way, Right, uh, Jesus said Himself, "Because you believe, right, that you'll be with me in paradise uh, tomorrow." Now, that's a great message, and, and we hear that, and I'm thankful. I'm so thankful uh, that God provides that opportunity for us. But if you really think about this thief on the cross, think about him for a moment. Is uh, yes, he went to heaven. Yes, he believed, and uh, yes, he was not like the other one who mocked God, and he was accepted. Uh, but I think about this man who has come to the end of his life, he has come to the end of his life, and he's, he's dying that day. He's dying as a thief, right? And he accepted uh, Christ that day. Uh, but that kind of burdens me, right? It kind of bothers me that, uh, that that man, he lived his life a certain way, and then it wasn't until his last moment that he was, he was able to, to live a life with Christ. He wasn't able to live a life with Christ, he wasn't able to live a life of faith. He wasn't able to see that Jesus do great things in his lives and the lives of others. No, that was it. That was the end for him, right? But I want to share that with you this morning to let you know that here this morning that, that we have that opportunity. We have that opportunity that God's come into your life, that he's shown you grace, that he's forgiven you, and he's given you an opportunity to accept him and to live a life with him. Right? A life just like Peter. He saw you on the shore. 
He saw you frustrated. He saw you struggling. He saw you depressed. He saw you tired. He saw you in your addiction. He saw you hopeless. He saw you. He saw you, and he came to you, and he called you out. You have an opportunity to live a life with Christ. You have a li- an opportunity to live a life of faith. And I share that with you to say, like, I'm, the, the great things that have happened in this church over the last five years, I think about, I can't even imagine what the next five years will look like. Right? Being in this house, who's going to come in? What are they going to do? Where are they going to go? Like, how is God going to use them? In a short amount of time. In a short amount of time, I cannot... Wait to see what's going to happen here in this church. I titled this message this morning, When the Son of Man Comes, Will He Find Faith on Earth? Will He find faith? Will He find a people who are willing to believe? Will He find a people who still are willing to trust in his word? Will he find people who are still open? And, and I got to tell you that, that here this morning, like I do know and I believe that there's, there's an openness in the world right now. There's an openness and there's a readiness in the world. I don't know exactly how or why. I can't really explain uh, the events that have happened or why they've happened, but I do know uh, that it's left people with questions. I do know that it's left people uh, deeper into addiction. I do know uh, that it's left people jobless, right? I do know that it's left people uh, uh, in a different place where I truly, truly believe that there is an is a, is a opening. There's a wide opening in the hearts of people, right? And uh, we're trying to, they're trying to fill it with, uh, with different answers. They got different, different ideas and they got it all figured out. But I got to tell you, that as a church, as a church body, right, that, that not only here in our services is it going to require your faithfulness, not only uh, uh, just on Wednesdays, not only just on Sunday mornings, but I'm telling you this morning that it's going to require you to live a life of faith. I don't know what situations you're going to be in. I don't know what college you're going to go to. I don't know what job you're going to be working at. I don't know what family you're going to be in. I don't know what city you're going to be in. I don't know where you will be in the next five years, but I got to tell you, when your moment comes to be used by God, where will you be? Where are you going to be? My older brother, he prayed for me for 10 years. And I, I know that he shared with me that he, he wanted me he wanted to just come down to Santa Maria. He wanted to grab me. He wanted to pull me out because he knew. He knew that I was living a bad life. He knew that I was struggling. He knew that I was hurting. And he knew uh, that there was freedom for his younger brother uh, in, in Christ, right? But for 10 years, he had to pray for me. He had to be faithful. He had to uh, run his Bible studies. He had to run his, uh, his ministry homes. He had to be faithful uh, in his marriage. He had to be faithful Uh, in his home. He had to be faithful in all of his doings for 10 years. For 10 years when I, when I would like with my actions basically be spitting in his face, ignoring his phone calls, blowing smoke in his face. I was just so disrespectful the way that I was living and the way that I was communicating to him for 10 years. But because he was faithful and because a time came when I needed help, I knew who to call. And that's many of you here today. Things don't, might not look how you think they should look. Maybe you've been praying for them for five years. Maybe you've been praying for them for 10 years. It's a long time. That's a long time. That's five years longer than I've been in this church. But when they come and when they have questions, where will you be? When they're looking for faith, will they find it? Or are you discouraged with with God? Are you discouraged with your church? Are you frustrated with your church? And are you voicing those things to people who are looking for hope? Don't do it. Don't do it. People are looking for a faithful people. People are looking for a faithful church. People are looking for God. And 
like the like the word says it says in Luke 18 8 when the son of man comes will he find faith on earth I don't know if he's gonna come in our generation I don't know I don't know if he's coming soon I I don't know I don't know if he's coming in 30 years I don't know if he's coming in 50 years I don't know if he's coming in 100 years I don't know if he's coming in 500 years but I'm telling you that we have a responsibility as a church in this generation to carry out faith. We do, we do. It's not about, our mindset should not be about traditionally, uh, am I gonna go to heaven or not? Right? No, no, no. It's a people that are gonna walk with God. It's a people that are gonna be faithful. It's gonna be a people that are gonna tell people the truth. It's gonna be a people who do right. We're not doing right so that we can get to heaven. We're doing right because it's right to do right. We're doing right because it's right to do right. I have so much faith in Victor Outreach Fremont. Men and women, not loyal, but faithful. Lives that have been changed. You've walked with God. You've trusted him. He's shown faithful in your lives. I want you to close your eyes right there where you're at. I want you to think about once again God's faithfulness in your life I want you to just remember moments I want you to take your mind back to the senior center it's okay I know we're looking forward but I want you to look back I want you to look at the day that you came into the church at the way that you looked around heard the music for the first time watched the worship team the way that you looked at the back of Pastor Anthony and Sister Angelica the way that they raised their hands the way that you saw the families the home, I don't know what it, what it was for you. I want you to see it. I want you to see it. I want you to remember. I want you to remember the day that you saw your son walk in through the room. I want you to remember and see the day that your spiritual son or your spiritual daughter went up on stage and got prayed out. Victory Outreach Fremont, you're a faithful people. Look at the life of Peter. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. He doubted. He argued. He lashed out sometimes. He got violent a few times. Don't let the weight of your mistakes weigh so heavy on you today. You're a faithful people. You serve a forgiving God, and he doesn't want you to walk away from him. He doesn't want you to put your trust and your security in the things that you have, or the job that you have, or the things that you do. He wants you to put your faith, your trust, and your security in him. You understand that? That you're a voice. You're a testimony. And when you go into workplaces, when you go into situations, when you run your life group, uh, when you go to the store, don't you dare. Sorry if I'm a little rough, but don't you dare. Mess with that testimony. Walk with your head up. Walk with your shoulders back. Victory Outreach Fremont is a people of faith. Yeah. 
Come on, if you're a people of faith this morning, I want you to begin to stand to your feet. And if you want God to use your life, I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, if you want to be like Peter and be used by God, if you want to see the great things that God wants to do in the lives of his people, I want you to lift your hands. Come on, he's calling you out this morning. He's saying, follow him. Come on, don't turn from him. Come on, don't wait till the last minute to accept him. Come on, today is the day. Today is the day to posture up. Today is the day to stand up straight. Today is the day to do right because it's right to do right. Verses 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, and not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, you are heaven's poetry, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. There's good works for you to do. There's good works for you to do. There's people for you to reach. There's children for you to raise. Come on, there's people for you to reach. There's hope that needs to be spread. Come on, we didn't just come into this so that we can come into church and just live good lives. No, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Father, every hand that's lifted, I pray, Lord, that you just speak to each and every individual. You're so personal, and you know every single person that's here, that's at home. And Lord, I just lift them up to you right now, Lord, that you give them a a keeping faith, that you give them a staying faith, Lord. That as they breathe in right now, as they breathe in, as they breathe in, they just breathe your spirit in. Shoulders going back, heads getting picked back up. Come on, shackles starting to drop. Chains, the cloudiness of the mind starting to be cleared. Come on, freedom starting to come over your people right now. Remembrance of what he's done, vision for what he will do. Come on, wipe away the cobwebs. Wipe away the cobwebs, Lord. Take away the doubt. Take away the unbelief. Take away the discouragement. Take away the frustration, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with faith. Fill us with belief. We believe in you. We believe in you. We believe in you, God. You're real, Lord. You speak to us. You show us. You lead us. You convict us of sin. You guide us. You show us. 
You bring people in at the right times. You put us in the right situations at the right times. Lord, I pray that every single person who's hearing this word uh, will start to speak faith, will start to speak hope, will start to have vision for others in their future. The Victory Outreach Fremont will be a body of faith. We'll start to invite people into this building. We'll start to invite people into this atmosphere. We'll start to mend broken people. We'll start to spread hope in dark places. We'll start to spread hope in dark places. Lord, and when it calls for us to do what is right, we will do what is right. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Victory Outreach Fremont, Pastor Anthony here with a friendly reminder to let you know that today is the first day of the new biblical month, and that is the month of Nisan. Nisan represents things that were once dead are getting ready to come alive again. It's also the month of new life. And so in this first day of the biblical month of Nisan, I want to challenge you to drop a first fruit seed into the house of God. 
believing God for miracles in your life, believing God for new life, and believing God that on this day, you're gonna set the tone for the rest of this month. It's a time where you and I are gonna drop a first fruit offering. So let's do that today. Visit the website, look at the QR code, and let's sow a first fruit seed. God bless.